see your block five meters behind the starting line mm. before everybody else. Mm. We can still make something happen. I don't know where it's going to come from, but we can still make it happen. I hate for us to go to this Olympics and repeat what happened in 2012, where we, we, we mounted so much pressure on one athlete, blessing or Kadari. I would hate for that to happen again. Mm. For some reason, our 4x4 girls and our 4x1 girls are all over the world. I really can't put my hands on them because if there's any medal that is going to come to Nigeria in athletics, it will come from our girls, either as an individual or as a team. Mm. Okay. Our girls, I'm sorry I'm being a little bit uh, feminist, but that's the truth. Mm. Our women have been uh, leading the, the pack, and I'm not going to be shy being proud of them. So let's do something now before okay. it's extremely too late. Ba Bambo has a few questions for you. Tomorrow. So, um, Mary, thank you so much for gracing us with your, with, with your presence on the show. I think it's, it's great that we're talking about mm. uh, Shegun Toriela, who has done, qualified seven. for seven consecutive Olympics. And uh, Mary, of course, is the only athlete that went to five consecutive Olympics from Barcelona 92 to Athens 2004. So, uh, I mean, on that note, uh, Mary, I wanted to ask you, maybe you can share from your experience for the current athletes. How long, I mean, what does it take for, to, to have that longevity in the sport? I mean, what do you do to stay in the sport for a period of 20 years? Um, and then also following on from that, in terms of the Olympics, I mean, you've talked about the girls. I agree with you that the relay teams are the best chance Nigeria has for getting medals um, in athletics at the Olympics. But what about the men as well? You know, we have a lot of fast men coming up, the likes of Divine or Duduru. Tega Odele, uh, current 100-meter champion, Shea Ogunlewe. You know, we have a good crop of men coming up. Can these guys not be trained together for the next six months to contend for medals at the Olympics? Um, so, I don't know, what, what do you think about that? That, that? That's exactly, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I, I started by saying that it may be late, but with the kind of the type of athletes that we have, they are hungry. We may just be able to make something out of them. But what I, what, what I, I find a little bit disturbing about the men's team is that they are not consistent. They are not consistent and they are all over the world. We need to get them together to train together, have like a close camp. That was what we used to do at the time. People used to to have issues and arguments with, uh, may he so rest in peace, uh, Alaji Ekeamu, for having, forcing us to have a closed camp so that we can focus. But now, the reverse is, is the case. Every, our athletes are all over the world. We need to get them together, even if it's at the dying minute. Put them in camp. Make sure they have a very uh, competitive uh, competition to keep them sharp. Because athletics is not like a football that you, you can get rusty a little bit and still be able to make something happen because it's a team sport. In athletics, it's you, yourself, and yours. You and the lane. It's an individual sport. It's a selfish sport. So all the athletes, all the four uh, relay runners must, be, must come to the game ready to run. They cannot have a haphazard preparation and form a team. No. All of them have to be consistent individually before they, they can now act, uh, perform better as a team. That is the issue I'm having with the, with the men. Now, as for how do you uh, prepare an athlete and how come I lasted so long? I lasted so long, like I said before, because I left the shores of Nigeria at the very tender age of 17. I was groomed from that tender age to the time I finished my competitive years by the American system. The system there worked because they married sports and education. While I was going to school, I was also seriously achieving my goal in, in the classroom. So and these days, our athletes are be beelining for Europe for money and shy away from education because 
going to U.S. and getting educated and getting my scholarship, I, I, I was able to kill two birds with one stone, mm. get my athletic ability and also get my degree. Most of our athletes don't have it, don't, don't have but one. So and that one they have a, has a very small window. That is the athletic, very small window. What happens when your legs can't take you anymore? So Mary, so if I, I can just... I for so long because I was disciplined, determined, and dedicated to the two things that took me to the U.S., education and sports. Mm. So Mary, if I can just jump in there. Um, you know, we talked, you talked about the athletes going abroad for, to Europe, looking for money. I mean, as a final question to you, Funding is very important. Right now, there's an Olympic camp in Port Harcourt at the High Performance Center in Uniport. Uh, the athletes that they've asked to come, some of them have come, some of them have stayed away. Funding is a big issue. We're talking about training these relay teams together for six months, and this will cost a lot of money. So I know that the AFN is doing what they can to get these athletes and keep them together. But can you speak to the issue of funding and perhaps how corporate Nigeria, corporate sponsors can really come in and support these teams ahead of the Olympics? Yes, funding, like I said, sport is capital inten intensive. Sport itself is a $500 million industry. But we, Nigerians, don't know how to tap into it. Sponsors shy away from funding sport lately because they don't trust how their money is going to be used, mm. one. They don't trust that they're going to get anything in return for their money, two. So you really, in a way, we, I hope, I'm praying that they will come back. Mm. Well, but it will take a lot of convincing to bring them back. Mm. And then again, you, what do you have to sell? The only person we have to sell in athletics right now, let me stick to athletics for, for now. The only person we have to sell that has a bank for the money is Blessing or Kabare. Mm. We need to package our athletes. They are, they, are, they are like commodities. If you don't package them very well, sponsors look at a whole lot of uh, 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 issues before jumping into sponsoring an athlete or a team or, or whatever. Mm. Well, very you have to be sellable. You yeah. have to be marketable. Very we must thank you so much for, for your time because you have, you have really said a lot. And uh, um, let, let's just say, let's just allow you to um, keep it here for now. There is still going to be a, a lot more to come in the days ahead as we build up to the Olympic Games. But we want to thank you so much for uh, sharing your thoughts with us uh, at very short notice and of contributing, of course, to our discussions tonight. So thank you so much, Mary and Yali, uh, so much for, for talking to us on the program tonight. All right, so, but Bambo, before we wrap up um, all of this discourse, I mean, Mary has, I, I, I'm sure there is very little to her to what Mary has, has talked about. She's talked about funding Yemi. Um, she's talked about um, the quality of coaching. Yeah. She's talked about the quality of the athletes yeah. that will keep corporate bodies away. And, and she's said exactly, said, she has said it exactly the way it is. Yemi? It's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a pity. I interviewed her four years ago, and she was optimistic that we're going to win something you know, just before the guy before, it, before the london olympics and we you know we got there didn't, didn't win anything and what she said shocked me that she's going to be blunt it, it looks like that situation might just happen. Itself. I, I hope it doesn't but but the question is do we really learn our lessons that there's there's really nothing to add to all she has said i'm just hoping that the administrators will, will now see that you know there's a lot to gain if we put in the right investment if they can see that. And also, you know, talking about the Olympics, I'm hoping there will be no surprises because uh, look at what Kenya is going through now. Uh, they just might not be there. I'm hoping we'll not get issues with uh, doping violations and all that. That's on one side. Then I'm hoping maybe the Nigerian spirit, we rely on it too much. Well, but opponents, but I'm just the opponents dropping button on the final yeah, Something day like that. Or failing to start. We or might just <laughs> get something. <laughs> Some kind of magic. Uh, but guys, I mean, I'm, I must thank you so much for, for this time. Bambo, we still have to bring you here uh, again and again, but maybe you allow you to say a last word before we allow you to go, because uh, you've been doing a lot of work yes. um, going to primary schools, secondary schools, yes. trying to raise the next generation of superstars um, for Nigeria. How, how successful has, has this been for you? I mean, um, are you getting any inspiration from the quality of talent that we've seen? We're very excited about the quality of talent we've seen. Uh, we had a whole year of competitions last year. We went to about five different cities. 
uh, we've seen some amazing talent, 14-year-olds running 12.2 seconds. So you're seconds. already looking at the eight years from now.